everyone around the U.S. and the world watching on streaming. We're doing that for the very first time from any pinball show, so we're happy to, uh, to say that. Also, if you didn't pick up one of these guides when you got here, these are free. Show guide, please get that also. Uh, some posters out there. They make great uh, things for you to get signed. These are only $3.00. John Yowsey, famed pinball artist from, uh, well, a little game called ACDC, and uh, Funhouse, Twilight Zone, uh, Whirlwind, several others, has done the poster for this year, and he signed 50 and numbered them. So, yeah, yeah, John, I, I called him and told him to watch on the Internet, so he may be watching right now. So um, uh, these are available out there. Also makes a great uh, place to have people sign down there next to his if you want to do that. So make sure you get some souvenirs before you go. Uh, the show started in 2008, but it really started before that. Um, it was in a pizza place in Oak Harbor, Washington for four years. It was like a gathering of some players, some little fun tournaments. And every year it kept getting bigger and bigger. And finally, you know, we said, we may have a show. Uh, so we got together with a few volunteers, and we, we had a tournament in place. Kaylee George, the world champion, is from here. So he handled the tournaments. And then we got a guy to do the funding. And I said, you know, we got to, to be a real show, we need a seminar. And they said, well, we don't know if we're going to have 10 guys or 100, and we can't afford that. So I had met Steve Ritchie in 2002 at the Texas Pinball Festival. And uh, I was pretty new then, too. I only owned a couple of machines. And uh, so I was, it was a big deal for me to get my Star Trek Next Generation Translite signed from the master. So uh, my first experience with Steve was, uh, so do you have this game? Yeah. He goes, does it work? And I said, yeah. He goes, that's rare. <laughs> so he signed it for me and then a couple of years later I had just received my Elvis gold brand new in the box the day before the Chicago Expo and I decided to go there for the first time so I saw Steve in the hallway and I said man I just got my Elvis gold yesterday that, that's a beautiful game he goes can't believe you bought it <laughs> so I thought if we're gonna have a speaker for the first year of the show I want this guy because you never know what he's gonna say and so I contacted him, and I said, here's the deal. You could be talking to 10 guys sitting around 100 pinball games. I don't know. He said, I'll do it. Uh, I want to drive up from California with my wife, Diana. And so we got some I, – I put an email out to a few people. They said, yeah, we'll donate money. I told him we got the money, and so he hit the road. And, yes, he did get one or two tickets along the way because it is Steve. So uh, – and he liked the show so much he came back again. So other than the year he moved, he's been here for all, he's four of the five, and he's a very special friend of the show, and he's got a really uh, a game out now that he's really proud of. And so please welcome the legend, Steve Ritchie. Thank you, Jerry. It's always fun to come uh, north. Kind of went away. Anyway, uh... I love the show. It's, this is the show with the most games that you can walk up to and play. I mean, these guys go crazy moving them in here, and um, it, it really is. I mean, uh, the, only game I, the only show I can think of that even comes close to the amount of games is California Extreme, but this has many more pinball machines, and so it's, it's just a favorite show. Also, the people here are great. Um, you know, Jerry and uh, the Katies have been good to us, Brian, and uh, it's... it's uh, it's a great show that I enjoy very much. Ah, I gotta, I have to tell you a little story. It's like, it's, it's, you know, I don't tell, I don't tell jokes with bad words in them, but, you know, it's, it's, it's actually a great joke. It's, all right, this cowboy is walking through the desert, you know, and he, he comes across an Indian, and the Indian's just sitting there, you know, minding his own business. And the cowboy says, howdy. And the Indian goes, ow. And uh, the cowboy says, you mind if I talk to your dog? And the Indian says, dog no talk. And the cowboy says, hey, dog, how's this guy treat you? Does he feed you? What's the story? And the dog goes, he treats me great. I'm out here, you know, I get to sleep in his uh, tent and whatever, and uh, he feeds me twice a day. I love it. And the Indian's jaw drops. And uh, <clears throat> the cowboy says to the Indian, you mind if I talk to your horse? And the Indian says, horse, no talk. So the cowboy says, all right, horse, how's this guy treat you? And the horse says, he treats me wonderful. It's great. I get brushed. 
Sometimes I have to stay in the weather, but I get all I need to eat. He rides me, takes care of me, and the Indian's jaw drops. And the cowboy says, you mind if I talk to your sheep? And the Indian says, sheep lie. <laughs> all right, enough of that. It has nothing to do with pinball. It's hardly even funny. Anyway, um, I've been working for the last year on, I shouldn't say I, Lyman and I and our team and Gary and, um, and everybody. I've been working on ACDC and it's been a tremendous amount of fun and excitement. It's like one of the best licensors I ever worked with. In the beginning, um, there was some limit, but it didn't actually come from the people that licensed us the game. And we ended up getting 12 songs and uh, b virtually everything we wanted. And um, you know, we have a, a much better sound system, and we're we're uh, we're going to continue to expand in this uh, technological direction, no question. But making ACDC was definitely a labor of love. I'm a fan of the the uh, the band, of course, from way back. Although you know, it's like I was a guitar player, but I didn't really want to care. I didn't care about playing their tunes. I cared more about Queen and things with more complexity. It's like ACDC is like the lowest common denominator in rock, kind of, but it's it's just hard to ignore, I don't know, the infectious beat and everything else. I think it's, it was, uh, you know, a lot of fun to make, and I, I really like, I don't know, I really identified with the passion while you're playing the game with a big speaker, you know, and, and, and a new sound system that sounded great, and um, we're really proud of it. Um, it's been a long haul, and it's been like making two games simultaneously, basically. Uh, we have a Pro, and then we have an LE and a Premium. The LE and Premium use the same play field, but there are many things different between the two. So it's, um, it's a new method we have of um, addressing many markets, and uh, um, I really like it. I think it's breathed new life in the pinball uh, industry, and, uh, and certainly we're, uh, we're enjoying that. Um, I'd like to turn down the lights if we could. We're going to look at some slides here. I, I generally like to do a slideshow. And um, Mike, I'm going to move with this microphone. And I'm not sure how your speakers are going to work here, but Mike's a master. He always figures out exactly what to do. Okay, this is like, this is weird. I just got back from a German show uh, recently, and um, the, uh, it's called the Pinball Center Show. And uh, I stayed with my host, Martin Wiest, who's a... Uh, you know, he's just like the rest of us. He collects pinball machines. He loves pinball. I see he's got 60 machines. He rents a building to keep them in, um, in, in Munich. And uh, he lives just outside of it. Great host. And uh, as long as I was going to Germany during, for the show, I decided to rent this Suzuki V-Strom 650 right next to the red bike. This is my partner's uh, BMW. And um, uh, it was a great bike, and in, uh, back there is the Alps, and this is like, oh, okay, this is a little different. These are some of my friends, okay? They're like dirt riders and stuff. It's like, yeah, you know, they're not really in great order here, but this is him breaking, breaking his arm. He, he just fell down, and it's like, I have a lot of friends that are kind of like beat up and stuff from riding dirt bikes, and anyway, I don't know how that got there, but, oh, and this, this is John Bork. I thought you recognize John Bork. Maybe not. All right. Um, this is an old picture. I brought it with me because Eugene's here, Eugene Jarvis. He'll be speaking later today. And uh, the guy on the left is Hans Rosenzweig and then Eugene. And then me. I'm, I'm not awake. There's a story behind that. It's a very bad story, actually. And then Joe Quadri, our, our Italian Swiss French representative who lived on the border and for some, you know, he, he had magic. He could sell games to any country that needed to be sold to for us, and he had this amazing freedom that seemed to be, you know, it just seemed to work, you know, sort of against the law. Anyway, um, yeah, this is, the, this is the result of a night of drinking grappa, and then espresso, and then grappa, and then espresso, and then grappa, and then espresso, and then grappa, and then espresso. And it's like, I can't see anymore, and that's what, I, when I went to bed, I would just rise up out of the bed, you know, express, I'll wake up, and then bam, the grapple would hit me in the head, I'd go back to sleep. The next day was the most miserable of my life. That's it. It's like the weirdest hangover illness, okay? Uh, this is a very old picture of high speed on the line. This is uh, 
You can see the guys wearing the suits. They didn't make the game. Okay, that's Kordak and Barry Osler. They're down there dressed up, but they, they didn't do shit on this game. Sorry, that was a bad word. All right. Anyway, you can see the guys, my brother there on the right, and me, and you know, we're actually working. It, it's a, I like this picture. Uh, question? Yeah, and yeah, rolled up sleeves. This is a very old picture of a bunch of a bunch of uh, pinball guys. It's like you know, let's see, Pat Waller. What's his name? Next guy. Come on, somebody knows. Ward Pemberton. That's it. Barry Osler, Joe Camico, Jim Patlow on the right, Claude Fernandez. Below him, John. Norris. Yeah, John Norris, uh, Jerry. Yeah, Rob uh, Burke, uh, Dennis Nordman, and I. And Dennis Nordman, what do you think he's saying to me right there? He, he's saying, you see that chick in the third row? <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, this is a more recent picture. This is taken in Germany. This is, um, this is my friend Martin, my host in Germany, his daughter Ramona, who is like in love with pinball. He bought an ACDC Let There Be Rock LE, and she is in love with this game. I wish I would have made movies because while she plays, she dances, and it's incredible and she screams, and she's actually a very good pinball player. <laughs> this is my granddaughter. We're, gonna, we're, we're, we're collecting for a little plastic surgery in the future. <laughs> and um, this is a Tron. I'm, I'm not sure why I have this picture. I, I, you know, I didn't make Tron, but Tron's a good game, and uh, <laughs> I, I like the artwork. And this is the first battle that we made uh, from ACDC. It was uh, created by... Um, Dave Link, a, a very gifted sculptor, and we use him often. And he also created a train. But this train is one train I bought. It had, you know, it didn't look anything like the ACDC train. It was just the only train model I could find, so I bought it and built it. And this is like, this is the Norway pinball show, okay? It's a very small show. Pe people in Norway are like real generous. They leave their games on the street. You can just drive by, take one if you want, you know. It's considered bad for them if you take more than one, you know. And uh, I took the Centaur. That's that's the only one I wanted. This is this is the Norway pinball show. Very interesting show. These people are just as intense as the rest of us. They love pinball. They're they're exactly like us. They just speak a different language. Actually, it's English, but you can't understand it. <laughs> and uh, this this is uh, Ole Christensen on the right and his kids and um, a great guy, great host. We had a good time. Norway's a, a, a a beautiful place. This took place in a town called Sendefjord, uh, outside of Oslo, and uh, a very pretty place. And this guy is a heavy drinker. <laughs> and this is this is this show right here is like um, this is this is pretty much the whole show. There's one more row on the far left there of machines, and they have a stage, and uh, there's even games up there. And this is the infamous Dave Link, our sculptor, and uh, he's a. Uh, like I said, a very talented guy. I, I like to uh, to talk with him, relate. We we have a good time designing uh, toys and things for the game. He's full of ideas, and uh, a creative person that I love working with. And uh, this is his van, which is amazing. Every every Halloween, he throws together a show. Here, let me bend over a little more. This knee like that. And uh, it's like he's um, he tows his trailer around as a promotion and uh, gets people to come to his. Uh, his haunted house, and it is spectacular, okay? It's got actors, it's just, it's blow away, it's bloody. It's, you, you can't bring kids there. <laughs> e even when you're standing in line, bad things happen. They, the people appear like zombies and stuff and grab people and you're stalked and it's disgusting, okay? Um, this is a prototype of um, the LE of uh, ACDC. And uh, this has a nose, but uh, later versions didn't. This is like, Someday I'll tell the story of, of the face of ACDC, the many faces of ACDC, that would be it. And the grief that it caused, and I caused it by putting the eyes in a certain place. But I always wanted the devil to be down there in hell, basically talking to you like this, loser. And uh, um, it, it worked out in the end, but it wasn't the artwork that we, uh, that we really uh, wanted and loved in the beginning. Later it became let's just say tolerated. <laughs> Here's the, uh, the cabinet for the pro and also let there be rock. Um, uh, we have, uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of great testers on the line. That's, that's what AC, making ACDC at Stern is about. It's like 
It's not really about the machines as much as it is about some great people who work there, who make things happen. Uh, and these are uh, technicians that are checking out the game for the first time on a test rack. This is Jim Schoberg. It's like, I don't know what he's saying here, but yeah. Uh, anyway, Jim helped us with the game, believe it or not. And this is Lonnie Rob. He's too happy to wear double horns. That, can't, that doesn't even work. And this was a, that's Jim Belt also, but they, they fit him perfectly. They do, look at that. Something about those curves. John Borg, um, Mark Galvez did uh, a, a great deal of the dots work and uh, a, a nice job. Uh, uh, this is Rob and uh, Rob Blakeman's mechanical engineer on the game. And this is Andrew Pine, he's like uh, uh, a great hardware engineer. I like I like knowing him, and I he uh, I, uh, let's say I was tentative about what what kind of a you know a system we'd end up with on ACDC, but it worked perfectly, and I'm I'm very happy with his work. Is he he does great work, and he's going to continue working with Stern. Uh, this guy was terminated. <laughs> this this guy is is uh, a great asset to Stern. His name is Stephen Jensen, and uh, this is one person. Okay, I mean in the pinball business we see people come and go. And when they, when they come in, I mean, it, it, most people we get just have no clue, nothing, you know. They, but this guy walked in and started working on the first day on the artwork. And, uh, and nice work. He's responsible for the Let There Be Rock um, mirror glass, also uh, back in black cabinet artwork and, and mirrored glass, and also the premium uh, back glass. So he's, he's our new art director. and. Um, just a spectacular talent. I'm very happy to know him and excited about working him in, with him in the future. Uh, this is Wei Chang, and uh, he's a new uh, software guy at Stern. I don't know much about him. He's working on our next game, and it seems to be pretty cool, but I don't have time to even look. I'm looking at my game. I pay attention to my stuff because that's what I have to do. Um, this is a guy from the line again. I had a lot of people wear the horns, okay. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of think it's cool. Oh, that's a nice collection of people with horns on it. These guys are testers. This is Gilbert. This guy's magnificent, okay? You can find anything wrong with a pinball machine, you know, in a few, in a few minutes, okay, and fix it. Um, another tester. And this is, um, this lady is our uh, customer service. And a uh, great person. Why does her name escape me, Gary? Right. And, uh, uh, uh. This is John Rothermel, he's not happy. He's like, the reason why, here's the reason why, he's half, he's half French and half German, okay? It's like, this is a bad mix. It's like, now, I'm Italian and English, this is a bad mix too, but, you know. Uh -uh. Anyway, this is a stack of back boxes here. Some of the first pros coming off the line. Ladies here are sorting plastics and testing and more pictures of the game underway. I, I always think it's exciting, you know. Well, it is. It's exciting to see your game come down the line, you know. People working on it and building it. And uh, see a full truck, okay. This means a lot to Gary and me and a lot of other people. Having a truck full of games, ACDC Premium, a container ready to go somewhere means money. It means a continued existence for our company. It means everybody gets a paycheck. It means we got a business going. And, and the more games we, we sell, the better off we are. This is another great sign. The parking lot is full. You want a spot? Park on the street. Everybody's there. And when you walk in the factory, silk screen ink, wood, and bang, bang, bang! You know, it's awesome. Just feels great. I can't explain it. You know, it's, this is what I grew up with, and uh, that's how it is. <laughs> I like that factory. Anyway, um, more games for France. Uh, I don't know how many we sold to Australia, but it was, it was definitely a monster hit there. I, I'm, I'm thinking there was like 200 LEs and premiums gone to Australia. Is that right? You're low. You're low. I'm low. Good. You're low. I like being conservative. Then it, then it can't be construed as a lie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he didn't exaggerate. Okay. This is Lyman Sheets, the programmer. He has a serious illness. <laughs> and uh, he's mad at me right now. No, he's not. He's up playing in a tournament at... Uh, Todd's house today. I, I'm, I'm sure he'll be back down sometime this weekend. And there's Lyman and I. We loved working together on this game. We had, um, let's, let's say we've had some high wattage arguments where everybody in the company has basically heard us yelling at each other. But 
when we yell, it's like the game wins. We don't hold grudges. And, uh, uh, jumping around, this is my host, Martin Beast, and his wife, who fell asleep on his lap on a nice train in Germany. Traveling by train in Germany is pretty nice. And his daughter, Ramona, again, close up. Love that game. Can't help but love that laser cut side armor. Damn. And um, here he is with his daughter. He has a son, too, and, he, and, the, and the kid is like, he's awesome, you know. 500 million on ACDC, like his second game or something. Makes me sick. And here we are in the Alps again. This is like, okay, I, I like riding motorcycles, and I know this has nothing to do with pinball, but this was the three best street rides of my life. There's nothing like going to the Alps. I've been to Sierras and lots of other mountains, the Rockies. The Alps are cool because you can see the whole thing from damn near sea level to the top. So it's just this giant, ominous wall all around you. And uh, gorgeous sights everywhere you look. This mountain here on the left is called Gross Glockner, but it was said Gross Glockner. That's how, that's how Martin said it. And it means the big bell, and it's the tallest mountain in Austria at about, I don't know, 13,000 feet or something. We were up there. When I got to the top, it was 11 degrees, you know, and my hands were freezing. But uh, you know, the motorcycles, are uh, they have a, a decent windscreen on them, so you don't get as cold as the you know uh, air pressure. This is sadly a... Uh, glacier that's melted. It's just about gone. It used to, you know, go well halfway up that mountainside there. It was just right below the, uh, the gates. And here, here we are with a waterfall in the background. And uh, I don't know, gorgeous place. This this valley is incredible. And I don't know how many miles you can see. There's just no place like it. And uh, anyway, that's pretty much the end of my slideshow. <clears throat> um, I can answer questions um, if prompted, and uh, um, I'd be happy to if you guys have any questions um, about ACDC, about Stern, about anything you want to talk about. And if there aren't any, I'm leaving the stage. I definitely need a translator. It could be Jim. Thank you. What is your, I guess, favorite memory of working on ACDC so far? I didn't even care. What is a favorite memory of working on ACDC so far? Favorite memory? <laughs> not beating up Lyman Sheets after a big <laughs> argument. No, that, that's not it. No, it's like uh, favorite memory is maybe like the day we find out that we're getting all 12 songs that we asked for. And the choice was difficult, you know? It's like you... Uh, you hem and haw. I guess if there was one I missed, maybe I'd trade out War Machine for Dirty Deeds. I don't know. That's maybe my one, my one change that I would make if I could. Anyone else have any questions? Did the band members put any input? Um, no. In fact, the band members, I don't, I don't even know if they, they know we made a pinball machine. It's like... <laughs> I, I, the management does, you know, but uh, I don't, I, they, they might know, they might not. They, these guys are, well, they have families, lives in Australia, probably like fabulous lives, and uh, I'm sure they're not thinking about a pinball machine, but that's just my imagination. I don't know. Who knows? So they don't, they, you did not uh, know if any band members actually bought a machine then or got one? Or get one, yeah. We have no idea if they bought any machines or not. We, we just, we have no idea. I, I think if they play them, they're going to appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. I think you. they will. Any other questions? Uh -oh. It's the doctor. This is Eugene Jarvis. I mean, do you mean to tell me that Gary did not give any games to the band members? Oh. <laughs> we'll talk about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about that later. Yeah.
and, and, and you will be severely admonished for bringing a thing up like that at a public <laughs> Close enough. Test. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, when you voiced over the, uh, the devil in ACDC, it sounded like the, the voice of the No Fear machine. Did you voice the guy over as well? It's funny how that is. <laughs> yeah. Second place is the first loser. That's the line I was thinking about when you. What can I say? <laughs> yeah. Another thing too, uh, I was uh, I found out on your Wikipedia that you also uh, voiced over Shao Kahn in the early Mortal Kombat games and was a narrator as well. Uh, could you do like uh, the Liu Kang friendship line? <laughs> Mortal Kombat Two. I don't even remember it. I don't think there's any <laughs> friendship in Mortal Kombat. No, there actually is. I'll uh, try a couple, okay? Right. They're hard for me because it's so long ago. Fatality. <laughs> um, I, 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 I can try to try one. Just give it a shot. Uh, oh, uh, the, the Liu Kang wins uh, friendship. What does he say? No, Liu Kang. Uh, Liu Kang wins friendship, friendship, <laughs> again, or something like that. I don't remember the line, but I'll try it. Okay. Liu Kang wins friendship. I don't know. Uh, okay. yeah. I'd have to hear the game again and again, and I haven't heard it in years. Not only yeah. that, in order to, I mean, you have to, you have to understand, this is like 25 years ago, okay, that <laughs> yeah, I recorded that stuff, and I haven't played Mortal Kombat since, and since then my hearing has gone downhill, and in order to duplicate things like that, speech and whatever, like the No Fear voice is much more recent, and I was partially deaf when I did it, so I could recognize my own voice doing it correctly. With Mortal Kombat, I have no idea if I'm doing it correctly or not, because I can't hear my own voice, unfortunately. Oh. Right. Well, but it's cool to, to get to hear that again, especially from the, uh, the original. Okay, he's got another it. question, Jim. All right. Okay, there you go. Thanks. Okay, thanks for asking. <laughs> Say it again. <coughs> Don't sit down, please. Wait, there's one more. Uh, I wanted to know how many games, you know, you literally have come up with and have sort of died on the drafting, on the design board that never came, like, was it five, was it two? How many games that never made it to full production? Okay. Well, it's, 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 uh, it's sort of a nebulous question. Okay, one, one game that I designed that never got made was a game called Devastator. It was a video game, and when we finished our project, it was it was clear that video games were dead. I mean, there was just nothing left, so we didn't sell. We built about eight or ten machines. Uh, you could say that uh, the first pass I made on, on Stellar Wars, okay, it was, uh, this was a game that the play field came up and played so bad that the next morning somebody put pigs in space lettering on my game, on my Whitewood. I picked up the whole thing and threw it in the dumpster and started over, but it's like, it's, it's uh, the things we do in the business. You look back and you think, okay, you know, I, I make a I make a two-level game. Well, that Williams boy. After that, every game had to be two-level. I mean, so they just jumped on it. And then after Flash did very well, they go, come on, make another one. So I just hurried up and made this wide-body Stellar Wars, and you know, it was a rushed mess. It's like I had to fix it. I had to start over, and it turned out to sell good after I redid it. Uh, you, know, you get caught up in this stuff. It's, but it's an exciting thing, you know, to see a business work and to help it, you know, help it keep going. It's, it's fun. It's, it's my passion in life is making pinball machines. And uh, I do love it. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Hi. Um, when you have uh, produced a game and you have, like, a final numbers, like, a, of the cabinets that you produce, like, let's say 5,000 or 8,000 or whatever, how many unproduced Parts or cabinets or, or play fields is distributed to um, parts vendors for you know for repair. And is there a question? Yeah. Like what percentage of parts is is not assembled just to for, for uh, now this. It, we, we have some uh, excess, we don't have excess. And when I talk, I'll talk about manufacturing. We don't have excess, but we buy excess of some parts. So if there's, you know, 
500 of everything, we go right in the tank. But we do buy extra play fields or back glass or buterits or so forth, and it varies from game to game and how many we buy, sometimes enough, sometimes not enough. But it's not leftover, it's purchase for that. If there's leftover, we blew it. Oh, you're going to talk more now. No, I'm going to ask you a question. This is a very important pinball question. Two okay. questions, two part questions. First part, how does that bike compare to your bike at home? This bike is a whole different world, okay? It's much nicer. It's the newer model V-Strom. It has like a better wind coverage. The windshield design is totally different. It's got that piece up there. You tilt it a little bit and you get no helmet buffeting, whatever. The power is much faster, comes on quicker. It's making more horse. It's, motorcycles are amazing. So are F1 cars. That's where they're getting all this technology. A 650 used to make 25 horsepower, okay? My bike at home makes 70. This one makes 80. 80 horse out of 650 cc and 54 miles to the gallon, okay? It smooths, it turns nicer than mine, but, I, you know, I'm, I don't hate my bike. It's good. It just feels more like a a piece of agricultural equipment compared to this. <laughs> okay. A little more it, vibration. The second part, and how does that bike compare, compare to my bike? Um, well, your, your bike is basically a shaking brick. You sit on it and it, that's your bike. And <laughs> however, you can find a sweet spot where it just sort of cruises along. But it's a very narrow band. Okay. You know what I'm talking about. All right. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for having me here. I love the Northwest Pinball Show. It's great to be here and see all you guys and have a great time here. Thanks. Wait. Here comes Brian Katie. Oh, yeah. I have to ask a trivia question. Exactly. So We, we are going to give away a, I, I think it's a translate, is it not? An ACDC translate, a pro. Here's the question. And I, how are you going to, you know, determine who answers first? You have to be the judge. I'm not going to be responsible for this. Okay. okay, Jim and I will figure out who raises their hand first when you answer this, or when you ask the question. Okay. And then we will go through, whoever does that gets to what, have you signed the translate in front of him and wins an ACDC okay, translate Eugene that's Jarvis on that table. Eugene Jarvis is exempt from this. He can't participate. Okay. <laughs> Either that or if he wins, he has to give it to me. All right. What is the wrong. name? What is the name? of my very first pinball machine. There you got it. <laughs>